The Habit of the Nun. Chapter 4. The Visit. Fiordaliza was praying to the Lord. Dear Lord, please. Help me find out why I'm here in this convent. Then she went to Mass. Later, while she was coming back towards the convent, she heard a woman's voice whispering. Fiordalizo, Fiordalizo. Can you hear me? I need to talk to you. Fiordalizo. She turned around a few feet away from the bushes, and there was Annie, always well dressed, holding a nice white lace parasol in her hand, sitting on top of a big branch hanging from a tree. She called her. Fiordalizo, please. Come closer. The nun was surprised to see her there, so she walked closer and a little irritated as well, asking out loud. What is that you want from me, lady? Are you trying to get me in trouble? It was Annie indeed, smiling. You are getting in trouble on your own, hun. Can't you see I'm dead? There's nothing I can do to you. Then a green apple appeared in her hand, and she started to bite on it. But Fiordaliza was not too happy at that moment. Then just tell me what you want from me, Annie. The ghost jumped down from the tree, dusting off her dress and smiling a little more. She tossed far away the rest of the apple that all of a sudden disappeared in the thin air. Lit up a cigarette. She began to saunter around the young nun, making her feel even more uncomfortable, scanning her from top to bottom very carefully. Finally, she exploded in a dark, endless, crazy laugh, echoing through the fresh air of the morning. <laughs> then she asked, Why are you a nun? Answer. Fiordaliso looked down, confused, not exactly knowing what to reply, a little disoriented perhaps. Yet, she found the words to explain. I don't know why. Sometimes. I even wonder why. But Annie was there for a reason. So she explained. I tell you why. Now listen to me very carefully. Please. In a previous life, you were the lover of a man that cared a lot about you. He had many lovers indeed. But Fiordaliso did not want to hear one more word, and started to walk fast in the opposite direction to leave. Please, Annie, stop following me. Annie disappeared to reappear quickly right in front of her, blocking her way. No, listen. It's time for you to know so. Stop right here and listen to what I need you to know right now. Please. You'll be sorry if you won't. Fiordaliso tried one more time very hard to be patient and listen. This man loved you more than any other woman he met before you. He even started to cheat on his wife for you. He wanted to marry you. He did not love anyone else but you. Then she lighted a new cigarette, continuing calmly. His wife was a very beautiful, respected woman. Yet, she meant absolutely nothing to him after you came along. However, sweet girl, you had no idea that he was married and fell in love as well. From that day on, you promised God that you would never fall in love with another man. And I guess God heard you. Fiordaliso was very confused. I don't understand. 
and but Annie lifted one hand open in the air to stop her from taking another step if she had tried to walk away again and continued you believed your promise you knew that he was indeed the only love of your life ever well his respected wife then killed him because she discovered the affair and she couldn't stand it for one second. So, time went by. And now, in this life, you subconsciously wanted to continue to respect your desire to stay loyal to him. And you became a nun without even realizing the real reason why. Fiordalizo's expression became irritated and more disoriented. She started to quickly walk away again, with no success, as Annie was continuously reappearing in front of her to block her. This time the ghost started to laugh even louder, as the whole thing became very entertaining to her perceptions. <laughs> then she yelled, Silly girl, if you leave now, you will never discover the truth. You will continue to drink wine before Mass every morning until it will become obvious to everyone. Fiordalizo was getting upset. You are crazy. You are so crazy. And here I am trying to listen to your insanity. But Annie was determined to let her know something very important. Fiordalizo, I'm not finished talking. And you need to know this. Listen, I am the woman who killed Jim. I was his gorgeous wife then, at that time. You understand. His name is Jim. Jim, Jim, Jim. Can you say, Jim? Fiordalizo came down a bit, looking far in the distance. Then she answered. Jim. Annie was now ready to throw away her cigarette. She became a little upset, then she said. Well, listen. Today, in this very life, I am Jim's slave for the rest of eternity. And trust me, girl, I don't like it a bit. Fiordalizo exploded in tears. Then she tried to speak. What am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, but I don't get this. Annie was ready to lit another cigarette. Then after a pause very calmly, she said, You need to let him know that you love him. It's very important that you do that. See, Jim died killed very tragically. And he never had a chance to let you know how much he cared for you. At that point, a very little tear came out from Annie's left eye. Fiordalizo started to walk away more determined than ever that she had to leave crossing and passing through the ghost, standing right in front of her. She then noticed the tear coming down from the pale face that was staring at her the whole time. So she asked, Are you actually really crying? So even a ghost like you can cry? But Annie was very fast in recomposing herself from a very sad, lost expression. Are you crazy? I almost never cry. Listen. You need to help me be free from Jim. I know you can do this. I have no intention to be a slave for the rest of eternity. He loves you, not me. And until he finds you, and you tell him that you love him, I would have to be his prisoner. This man knew you in your previous life, and he loved you so much that you need to help me be free. Are you giving up on real love? And for what? For this convent? For a life that is not for you meant to be? Are you crazy? I'm here to beg you to help me. Please. Fiordalizo still in shock was starting to feel and believe these words, still resonating clear in the fresh morning air. Then she asked quietly, How can I possibly help you then? 
I'm listening. Annie regrouped herself from a moment of sad confusion to speak. She loved Jim, but there was absolutely nothing she could have done to make him love her back. And she knew it. Taking a moment to reorganize her thoughts, then she said, Very well, listen, Fior Delizo. You need to see Jim tonight. So drink as much wine as you can, and just go to sleep when you are ready. You will see him. All you have to do is to dance with him, if he asks you to. Nothing else, then magic will take its course. Still confused. The nun asked. Are you actually saying that I will see Jim tonight? Annie was looking now tired. Her energy was vanishing fast. But she answered. Yes. Now you can. Because you are aware of what I just told you today. After drinking your wine you will remember who you used to be in the previous life, and everything that happened between you two. Then, you will remember the real love you used to feel for him. A love hiding within your heart, for perhaps too many years. Yet, it will pour out all at once, it will be very intense. Please, now tell me that you want to do this. Be aware that after that moment I will be free, and in a way, you will be too. The young nun was taking a few seconds to just imagine the scenario. Then she whispered softly. I want to do this. Then Annie lifted herself up in the air, flowing a little up and down. Her expression became soft, and she smiled before leaving the scene. You are not cut to be a nun. Trust me. Have a good day and a great night. Young woman, prepare to dance as you never had before. You won't regret it. I promise. Bye now.